being a full-time sailor has its good times and yes, bad times. And in Modelo, it's mostly good. Gonna hang out with the um, Canucks, a couple Canucks and a Cap Verdean, Michael. Yeah. Canucks are cool. Canada. <laughs> Canada. The last Canuck I met was in Cartagena. He was from, from Quebec. Bruno de Sade. Bruno. Bruno de Sade. It's festival season in Mandelo, and this is Fest de saint jean Okay, I'm introducing the Canucks to um, Stompedas. They didn't know. So, here we go. I think they can take it. Of course, those men from the north can take a few Stompedas. We followed the procession to the church on the hill. Here, people lit candles and made promises to God, and others made wishes. We also met Pesh and his kids. You guys make your promise? Make your promises, make a wish. Yeah, is that make a wish? Later we settled for a few beers and a show. Eventually, the music got going. Here, our friend and guide, Michael, got inspired. made the best of the evening and didn't get back to the boats until very late. And a couple nights later, near disaster struck. Last night we avoided a near tragedy as far as boats go. So we had an issue here. I was like hanging out with the Canadians, <laughs> Dave and Peter. And then our friend Mamadou called, he said, oh, you better get on your boat right away, there's some shit going on. And the boat ahead of me, this wooden boat, <clears throat> his bow line broke and the guy's like hanging backwards you know banging into my boat so we rushed here with Dave and uh, turned on the motor and let out some more chain to clear and put on some fenders and now the guys are trying to fix the situation and uh, it's pretty hairy there's like at least 35 knots of wind the guys from the marina came out with a zodiac you know asked me if they could tie that boat to my boat and i said absolutely not because you know i'm just holding on with an anchor there's no way i'm holding on two boats together just one anchor so they were cool enough and uh rationalized and they ended up tying it up to another boat until somebody can dive and fix the the mooring line so right now it's morning i took up some of the slack on my chain because i was too close to the ferries behind me because it was blowing at like, it had to be like in around the 40, 40 knots or more, you know? Pretty, pretty violent. Now it's died down to about 20, 25 knots. Hopefully the guys will fix this issue because the, the wooden boat ghost is tied up to another boat and uh, that's it, you know? So you got two boats on one mooring line. So hopefully it'll, it'll fix that because he's right ahead of me. If it breaks again, he's just gonna come drifting, banging right into me. But uh, luckily, we reacted quickly, and again, thanks to Mamadou, who, you know, called out, saved at least one boat, because that stern line would not have held, I think, through the night, and he might have drifted out down into the bay. And he could have taken me with him, but, uh, you know, I have a mantis anchor and a solid chain, but who knows, you know, so stuff can, you know what can happen, but whew, that was an exciting evening. Merci, merci, thank comme you ça, very much. C'est comme ça, ça fonctionne les copains, non? Ouais, bah, ah, non. ouais, non? <laughs> yes. yeah, It's so, he saved my, he saved the, probably two boats, man, Mamadou. <laughs> Fuck, man, it was crazy. Thank you so much. And there, so there it is. That's life when you live aboard, you know? I think everything's calm and cool and mellow and you got like emergencies, all of a sudden you're home and life and everything can just like float away into no, Netherlands, so crisis avoided, disaster avoided for the moment. Let's hope that these guys uh, 
fix the mooring line for, for the wooden boat up here. They fixed it and calm returned. Nat was busy with a new friend and Mamadou and I made new friends too. Let me assure you, it was all good, clean fun. We just had some food and music. A video. Lady and Deborah. And as I said, it was festival season. Tomorrow, mark Cape Verde's independence. Thousands marched in protest, mainly against corruption and secondary treatment. The protesters used football's penalty whistle and a red card as a symbol of protest against foul play. According to many Mendelisas, the capital Praia, the financial powerhouse, is heavily favored in negotiating and funding compared to Mandelo, Cape Verde's second city and the country's cultural capital. Basically, the people of Mandelo want a common playing field and fair play. As far as mass public protest goes, they exercise their freedom of speech coherently and best of all, totally peacefully. As the country's slogan says, no stress. Independence Day was also about celebrating throughout the weekend. Here, one of the bosses of Doka's fishing club took co-workers out on his impressive catamaran for a day trip. And preparations were underway for another celebration. Even this impressive cable laying ship was on holiday. The commercial port was undergoing a transformation to host the Fest de Color. There was only one Canuck. Dave had gone back to Canada to settle some things and Peter dragged us along to this party spontaneously. Spontaneity makes for good fun. Next day, we were invited for a barbecue at Jilson's house. You may recall Jilson from previous episodes. He's one of Mandelo's best yacht fixers, working for many years at Marina Mandelo's boat CV. Jilson, wife Claudia and kids live here in their modest home. Claudia has a university degree in biology. It's hard for her to get a job in her field, she says, and is a stay-at-home mom for now. She speaks perfect French, which she learned at university in Algeria. Jilson's been renovating the house over time. It's been in the family many years. Originally, they are from Saint-Antao, 
Gilson is from high up in the mountains of San Tantau, and a family settled way up in the hills surrounding Mindelo. In fact, there is a whole community of people from San Tantau up here. The lady just below herds her goats and sells milk and cheese, which Natasha jumped on. A couple of days later, Gilson delivered Nat fresh milk and cheese from the lady. Nat's friend showed up, Emerson. He's a construction engineer and has been showing Nat another side of Mentello. As well, Gilson showed us another side of him. Even though he was a bit hungover and sore from dancing from the fish to color the night before, he managed to demonstrate the gymnast skills he learned as a kid. As you can see, he's got his act together and is well balanced. It's been nearly nine months we've been in Cape Verde, and that's the limit to our tourist visas. But we're not done here. We have more to see, yet we have to leave the country to renew our visas. So me and Nat will go our separate ways for a month or so. She'll go back to France and also renew her passport, and I'll go to Switzerland to visit family and friends. I don't like leaving Galopin alone at anchor, but Nat will be there a few days, then Pesh will take care of him. Meanwhile, I'll be at an extra special event, one that happens only five times in a century. <laughs> 